Daniel Cameron, the Attorney General of Kentucky, who is the Republican gubernatorial candidate, is not happy at all with Black Voters Matter because of this radio ad. What's up, Kentucky? It's election time, and all skin folks ain't kin folk. Over the past few years, we've taken to the streets to demand racial justice, to demand health care, and the right to make decisions about our body. And now Uncle Daniel Cameron is threatening to take us backwards. The same man who refused to seek justice for Breonna Taylor now wants to run our whole state. We can't let that happen. We won't let that happen. On November 7th, vote Andy Brashear for governor. Paid for by Black Voters Matter Action Pack, which is responsible for the content of the... Lord, well, Daniel dropped this tweet here. Um, go ahead and pull it up. For years, I've been called every racist name in the book for supporting President Trump and conservative values. Andy Bashir always looks the other way and remains silent even today. <laughs> he upset, y'all. Uh, joining me now uh, from Atlanta is Cliff Albright, the co-founder of Black Voters Matter. They dropped that ad. First of all, they're calling y'all Soros back. That's always the phrase they use uh, to try to tie anyone, anyone to George Soros, anything that he does. Uh, so, Cliff, why did y'all drop this ad and use that language against uh, or upset uh, Daniel? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Roland. I mean, we, we dropped it very simply, right? Because it's it's the truth. Um, you know, everything that we mentioned in the ad, he hasn't attacked the accuracy of, of the ad at all. Did you or did you not let go and refuse to charge the, the people, the police officers that killed Breonna Taylor? So you don't want to talk about the substance of the ad. He want to talk about the Uncle Daniel Cameron. And, 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 and technically, we didn't call him Uncle Tom, right? That to do so actually would probably be more of an insult to the actual Uncle Tom, but that's a whole another story. But you know, the uncle could have been anything. It could have been Uncle Ruckus. It could have been uh, uh, Uncle, like you know, we call Maxine, Congresswoman Maxine, uh, Auntie. Maybe we using it affectionately. The fact of the matter is, as soon as he heard it, he heard Uncle Tom, right? You know what we say, Roland? Hit dog, will holler. He's hollering mighty loud. Um, he saw himself in, in an Uncle Tom attack. But at the end of the day, what it's about is basically just reminding our folks that this is the same man who's been against our community, not even just in terms of the Breonna case, uh, the Breonna Taylor case, right, say her name, but everything else. Look at what he stands for. Look at his attacks against health care and, and, and trying to peel back the Medicaid expansion that took place in the state. That is a direct attack against the health of black communities. Look at his attack, unsolicited attack, against affirmative action, where after the Supreme Court had their affirmative action case, which dealt only with education, here comes Daniel signing a letter uh, with a bunch of other attorney generals, basically warning companies that they need to end their affirmative action hiring policies. Ain't nobody asking to send a letter. That wasn't even what the Supreme Court decided. He just went and took it upon himself to go out and, and pursue such a letter, which again directs our communities, attacks our jobs, attacks our, our wages, attacks our families. So it's not even just his stance on the Breonna Taylor case and police accountability. It's issue after issue after issue where he has shown himself to be just as much of a threat to the black community as, as, as the staunchest white supremacists. You don't have to be white to pursue and reinforce white supremacist policies. As we said in the ad, all skin folk ain't kin folk. Uh, and you laid out all of those particular issues. Uh, and when we talk about Breonna Taylor, first of all, the federal trial begins on Monday uh, for one of the officers who was involved in that. Uh, it was Daniel Cameron who, oh, I found nothing. I found nothing. But it's amazing how the feds found stuff uh, and have already gotten guilty pleas, but he found nothing and did nothing. Right. And he hides around, you know, you'll, in every interview, anytime he's asked about it, he'll say, well, all I can do is, is uphold the law and, and follow the law. And, you know, my hands were tied. You know, I just there was nothing I can do. And we know that that's not true. We know that that is gaslighting to the highest degree. We know that there are all types of violations that could have been filed, just as the Department of Justice um, is, is, is currently doing so against those who killed uh, Breonna, who murdered Brianna. He could have done that. Other uh, attorney generals uh, were able to do the same. Uh, uh, Keith Ellison in, in Minnesota was, was able to do the same. I mean, so there have been others at the state level, at the county level, and at all levels have found it somehow within the law to, um, to enforce when police officers kill a black person. 
to say that there was nothing he could do is basically he's repeating Judge Taney's line from the Dred Scott case where he's basically saying um, that a black man or woman uh, and sitting in our own apartment, sleeping in our own apartment, has no rights which a white man or a white police officer is bound to respect. Again, when we have an attorney general and a candidate for governor that takes that kind of a position, that is a threat to our entire community. And we say it again, all skin folk ain't kin folk. Um, when we talk, and, and again, I think what you have here is you have uh, Cameron not wanting to tick off police unions, uh, wanting to kiss up to them, uh, and so and, and that's what you're dealing with here. Exactly. I mean, he's 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 cast his lot. Look, he decided a long time ago which 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 team he was going to be on, and whether that's the side of the of the police unions or whether that's the side of Mitch McConnell. I mean, he takes some some amount of pride, and Mitch McConnell takes some amount of pride in in calling him like one of his proteges, right? And so, you know, he's he's picked his side, um, and his side is very much the side of anti-blackness. His side is very much the side that's against our, our safety, that's against our health, that's against our economic well-being, that's against our education, that's against our maternal health. Uh, on all these issues, he's picked the wrong side. And, I mean, look, uh, and this is a perfect example. Of, we use the phrase, uh, all skin folk ain't kin folk. The reality is uh, the white Democratic governor of, of uh, Kentucky uh, has made it clear uh, he restored the voting rights of formerly incarcerated. Uh, he has been clear where he stands on Medicaid expansion, which impacts African Americans. He's made it clear where he stands on voting rights. Here's a perfect example of a white Democrat who, frankly, is, a, is aligned more with black voters than black Daniel Cameron Republican. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why we always say, and you know, it, Roland, we always say um, that, you know, we're all about us. Right. The, the back of our shirts say it's about us. Um, we focus on our issues. It's not about glorifying any particular candidate and nor is it about demonizing uh, another candidate, even a candidate that, that we don't like or, or may disagree with. Right. But it's about what are the issues that different candidates stand for. And at the end of the day, um, Andy Bashir is, is, is head and shoulders um, just in a different league when it comes to, you know, his position on issues that are, are of concern to our community, whether it's restoration of voting rights or, or voting rights even more um, writ large, or, or whether it's police accountability or whether it's uh, uh, health care or reproductive justice on, on all these issues, um, issues that impact our community, there is a fundamental difference. And so uh, any day, you know, it's funny because people think that, you know, people like to say, accuse us of, um, you know, a role, and they say, oh, you only voted for Obama for 90 something percent because he's black and y'all are just all about y'all are just all about race and that's racist. And then when we come out of ad criticizing a black candidate, <laughs> they say, oh, that's racist. Well, which one is it? Are we, are we always guided by race and we'll vote for anybody black no matter what? Or is it that, uh, in fact, that we are actually guided by the stances on our issues? And if Andy Bashir or any other white Democrat is going to be better on the issues than a black Republican on our issues, then we're always going to fall on the side of our issues at the end of the day. Uh, and that's what it boils down to. And for in black folks in Kentucky, uh, it's abundantly clear that Daniel Cameron uh, has not been on the right side of the issues that black folks care about. It's abundantly clear. And that's why we're doing what we're doing, because, you know, you, you might have some folks that, that that don't know that it's that clear. Right. Maybe maybe they don't know about all these issues. Maybe they know about the Breonna Taylor, but maybe they get confused when he gaslights us and he says, well, I, I did everything that I could do, right? Or, or, or maybe they don't know about his position on health care, or maybe they don't know about his 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 anti-LGBT um, um, positions or any of the other positions. That are, he's got a thing on the attorney general's website, Roland, not his campaign website, the attorney general's website that says that one of his top priorities, you go to the website right now, pull it up. One of his top priorities is to stop wokeness. You are the attorney general of a state uh, talking about that your priority is to stop wokeness. You sound like DeSantis. And we don't need another DeSantis in the state of Kentucky any more than we need him in Florida or, or any place else. And here's the other deal. Uh, he is standing four square with Donald Trump, and we damn sure are not. And so uh, if he wants Trump back in office. That absolutely is not uh, beneficial to black people.
Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even talk about that. Thanks, Roland, for, for bringing that back up. I didn't even mention that. Yeah, he stands squarely with Trump. He says Trump is good for the country. Even when asked specifically, you can listen to interviews when he's been asked specifically and repeatedly, because evidently the, the, the person doing the interview just couldn't really believe what they were hearing, where they, they asked him about specific things that he has said about the black community, about specific policies, about um, specific things that he said about uh, predominantly black or African descent countries, right? And in and, and, Every case, all camera would fall back on is, you know, I believe he's best for us. I believe his values are best for us. Like, why he would use Donald Trump and values in the same sentence, I don't even understand that. And so, at the end of the day, no, we don't need somebody who, even now, even now, knowing all that we know about not just his, his horrible policies as, as a twice impeached president, but knowing all we know about the insurrection, about the coup that he, he tried to do, um, even now, knowing all this, he still stands squarely with him. He is a threat not just to our community. He is a threat to this entire country. We cannot have him. It's bad enough that he's in the attorney general position. We definitely can't have him in the governor's mansion, not in any state. Uh, uh, not only that, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here uh, and, and I'm going on his website and... You know, and, and these are sort of the broad. Go to my go to my iPad, please. Um, he, he's got all better schools. Come on, guys. Come on, let's go. Better schools, strong economy, uh, and and then then and then look look at them. Work requirements for welfare. First of all, we already have those things. Uh, get income tax to zero. Well, then how are you going to pay for stuff in the state? Uh, then he's got uh, safe streets, and then that's it. Like that. That's it. That, that that's all. So right. safe streets, strong economy, better schools. That that that's y'all. That's all that's on the website. Ain't nothing else. That's right. That's kind of limiting. Right. It's, it's very limiting, and it's, it's the traditional. It sounds like Mitch McConnell, right? It sounds like a little Mitch McConnell clone. You want zero income taxes, which is which is basically what Mitch did uh, uh, and the Republicans did with that big tax break that they gave to you know the, the wealthiest in the country. When they say that they want a tax break, they're not talking about regular folk. They're not talking about our folks that are that are struggling every day. They're talking about their friends, the 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 the, the big wealthy people, right? The the big elite. Uh, and giving them a tax cut, which then does what? It puts all the rest of us in even more economic stress, right? And so you look at that website, and those three, those things that he has on there are the usual thing. We want to, um, we want to give our friends a tax cut. We're gonna, we're gonna scare you to death about crime. So we could talk about safe streets, right? Which just means more police, more profiling, right? More black folks getting shot. Um, and then he's got the schools thing on there, which we know is really just code for the, the privatization that they're trying to do to our school systems all across the country. That's the usual stuff. That's, that's just Mitch McConnell light. That's Donald Trump light. And we don't need that. Again, it is rooted in anti-blackness. It is a threat to our community. It's a threat to the entire state of Kentucky. It's a threat to the entire country if we allow him to elevate. And just real talk, it would set our movement back to allow the, 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 the person who, but next to the police officers, who, who killed Breonna Taylor, who killed Brother George Floyd, next to them, the face of this anti-blackness of that period is Daniel Cameron, the leading face that, that was most staunchly saying, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna uh, prosecute um, these police officers, to allow this person, after we were in the streets for months, talking about how our lives matter, talking about police accountability, to allow this person um, to, to, to rise, to the level of governor would really be a, a, a setback. So it would be dangerous. It's dangerous for our community. It's dangerous for our families, but it's dangerous for this entire country and, and our movement. So I just want to show folks again. Uh, go to my go to my computer, please. So this is the plan of Daniel Cameron, his vision for Kentucky. It's three things: better schools, strong economy, safe streets. This is the issues and priority of Andy Bashir. Early learning and child care, fiscal responsibility and transparency, jobs and economic development, expanding high speed internet, infrastructure, boosting Kentucky's signature industries, expanding access and reliability of clean drinking water, expanding health care access and affordability, prioritizing public education, public safety, fighting inflation, investing in higher education and workforce development, rebuilding Kentucky after disaster, supporting our military, revitalizing Appalachian, Kentucky, and leadership of the Appalachian Regional Commission, supporting seniors and the most vulnerable, protecting 
protecting Kentucky families, dealing with the opioid addiction, pro uh, promoting Kentucky values, and the golden rule, protecting your rights. Uh, sounds to me, uh, and uh, sounds to me like, um, hmm, there's a lot more broader, broader uh, plan here. In fact, uh, right here, uh, he has in here vetoed a bill creating additional obstacles to voting. Daniel Cameron, he sided with that particular bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you know, people, people, sometimes, you know, some of the crit critics of, of Black Voters Matter. And let me be clear: today, I'm speaking on behalf of our of our PAC side, Black Voters Matter Action Pack. That's who actually did the ad, as you hear in the disclaimer. Um, and sometimes we get accused of, oh, y'all just for any Democrat or whatever. And, and no. We criticize Democrats. We criticize President Biden when he wasn't doing enough on voting rights. We criticize other moderate Democrats. We've been asked to get involved in races in some states for some candidates where we take a look at the candidate. We just like, that's, we can't do that. That's not, it's not consistent with our issues, with our values. We're not going to use our scarce resources. In this situation, we have absolutely no problem saying that there is a stark difference between the policies pursued by, by uh, Governor Bashir and the, the policies and, and the track record, the dangerous track record of, of, um, of, of, of Uncle Daniel. And so, and, and, and I want to add this too. It's interesting, Roland. This, as you played, this was the radio version. They haven't even seen the video version of the ad. When he sees that, he's gonna he's gonna really flip out, right? And so, why is it that he's even paying so much attention to this ad? What he knows is, if he really thought that he was gonna get all the support that that Mitch McConnell gets, that other white Republicans get, he wouldn't be he wouldn't be paying attention to to to, to our little radio ad, right? But he's scared. He's scared because he's counting on digging into a certain amount of black support. And when he hears an ad that, that criticizes his stance on, 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 on our issues, the issues that our community cares about, that worries him. And so this ought to be a message to anybody watching this race that he is vulnerable, but it's going to take deeper work, more resources to reach black folks so that we can get this message to them that, again, all skin folk ain't, ain't kin folk, that we can't trust Uncle Daniel, Daniel and that we've got to come out and, and vote. Uh, indeed, indeed. Cliff Albright, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. I can't wait to see the video. <laughs> it's coming, Roland. It's coming. <laughs> all right.